time out of your busy professional and personal lives to connect with Lafayette today. Before I introduce our speaker, I'd like to go over some housekeeping items. First, please use the mute feature in order to ensure that the presentation is not interrupted by any background noise. We invite you to include your full name, class year, and pronouns on your profile. We welcome questions and ask that you use the chat feature located at the bottom of your screen to type in any that you may have. Please know that the presentation will be recorded so that you and the rest of the Lafayette community will have access to it later. And I'd like to now introduce our speakers, the power couple, Pam Griffin and David Griffin, <laughs> who opened up Chocolate Therapy in Framingham, Mass. Uh, I think you said it was uh, four years in Dedham and eight years approaching in Framingham now uh, mm -hmm. by blending and, and their store is uh, created by blending their years of retail and manufacturing experience with their love of chocolate. They locally produce their chocolates with innovative flavors and feel good ingredients. Pam, David, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Great introduction, Sarah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And hello to everyone. And uh, the, the world, is, the Lafayette world. That's right. This is really pretty cool. You got uh, alumni from many, many time, yeah, fr we, time we, frames. No years. We won't mention years. <laughs> no years. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome. And we're going to uh, we're going to go on a journey today. But uh, as Sarah said, so my name is Pam. And I'm David. This is David. Mm -hmm. We've been here in Framingham. Actually, we just celebrated our eighth year in December. And uh, we are originally from Chicago. Illinois, but we've lived here in Massachusetts about 16 years. And uh, before pre-pandemic, which uh, is when I actually kind of met Sarah via email, we started talking about doing some sort of event, but it would be in person. <clears throat> so everyone was, you know, who could attend would come to the store and we would do this, you know, wine and chocolate. And then two days later, the uh, shutdown happened. So now I think it's, it's a much bigger uh, and better and greater opportunity because there are a lot more people all around the US that are able to join us here virtually, uh, which is what our world is now like. We are now, uh, we do these classes. Actually today we had one at two. So we're doing like three to four classes or maybe three to five classes a, a week, week. Yeah. Um, because the world is different uh, in many ways. We have been very fortunate to, uh, we've pivoted. And so uh, most of our business is online. Um, it's uh, corporate and it is virtual. So we have figured out how to um, survive in this uh, crazy time that we are in. So chocolate therapy. We are, uh, we are makers of fine, uh, amazing chocolates, uh, we think, most and so we've been think. told. Yeah. Uh, we make a lot of truffles, we make bars, we doing? make I'm listening to work. we make all kinds of things. Uh, we do special specialty items as well. We have uh, handbags, we have shoes. We do a lot of things. We like to have fun. We like to create some wild and crazy flavors. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're just all about uh, making sure you have a really great experience uh, in terms of chocolate. And today we're going to do a lot more with just uh, than just truffles. There'll we're be a little bit of education here. today, more so about chocolate manufacturing, chocolate production. We also have incorporated uh, into this presentation so that you understand a little bit about what it takes to make chocolate. There's pr some pretty fascinating things involved with it. Okay. All right. So I want to review. So hopefully everyone has their kits and their chocolate and they did not eat them because that has happened where we get ready to start and someone's like, well, wait, I don't have the kit. And so, oh, well, I, I was trying them. I ate them yesterday. I'm like, okay, we need to just kind of start over because we need to go through this together. It's a lot more fun when we go through it together. So you should have, everyone should have received a card. You should have received a four piece box of truffles and then two oh, wait, um, kits. <clears throat> and so uh, what I'd like you to do is to, I'm um, gonna ask for a volunteer and maybe Sarah, because she is still with us, to get the card that you received today and um, tell me what the four truffle collections are that you have and uh, that we're gonna go through today. Did Sarah sneak off? I would actually love if someone else could, because I was making sure that we had enough for other yeah, alums. Just, yeah, so yeah. I, I came in and I grabbed a 15 piece truffle kit from your from your store today instead. So okay. if I can invite well, someone else to talk about what truffles you were able to receive. That'd be I great. see Tina holding it. So I'm <laughs> going to ask her if she could read it for me. 
Are you talking to me? I am. <laughs> okay. so are you talking to me? Yeah. All right. Well, I figured there could be more than one Tina, but uh, yes, it's a four piece cho chocolate truffle collection. And that is featuring vitamin C, milk chocolate, lemon, lime, and blood orange. That's number one. Sounds good. Then we have dark chocolate, strawberries, and cream as number two. The Cure, dark chocolate with cinnamon, bay leaf, and cayenne, which is number three, very intriguing. And then we have dark chocolate, strawberry, and balsamic as number four. Wow, those sound like amazing flavors. I'm, I'm excited. You know. Those are actually the four that I picked up today as well. So that's good. <laughs> good. I won't be jealous. So you'll be able to join us. <laughs> balsamic right there. Um, excellent. So David's just grabbing those so we can... We'd like to enjoy them with you too, believe it or not. We don't eat a lot of chocolate, if that you know makes sense, but we taste everything we make, but in the little ice cream tasting spoons so that we would not look like Oompa Loompas at the end of the day if we were eating that much chocolate, it would not be pretty. So we have to just taste so we can make sure the quality is there. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much, um, Tina, for getting us all. So hopefully everyone had the same thing on their card. And um, we have these two packets, two little kits here, if you can see them in the screen. We've got a kit one and a kit two. We're gonna go through those together as well, uh, which will be a lot of fun. Make sure you have a little water so you can cleanse your palate as uh, needed. And then a little pair of scissors so you can cut open the kit as we go to each section. And other than that, just uh, open mind, uh, a, a hunger and taste for chocolate right now. And we're yep. gonna start the program. Yep. You ready? Talk about, uh, Throughout, I will be um, doing um, little trivia questions. And I always tell everyone that I do these um, just for fun because it's fun to do, but that you don't win a lifelong supply of chocolate or anything or a car. It is just uh, to kind of, you know, break it up a little bit from the talking. And so we'll, um, you'd be surprised at some of the answers. And if people uh, want to hit the uh, chat feature, feel free to do so just to um, communicate, the communicate the answer to us. Yep. All right. So we're, we're going to start. The first one? Yeah. Okay. First trivia question How much does the largest chocolate bar weigh? We've got 15,000, we have 8,225, or we have 12,700. And I am going to just shout out to the first person that text or chats the right answer. No. C. C. So we've got Lynn. Lynn Levy. Lynn is correct. It is 12,770 pounds. And you can see a little uh, rendition of it here. Uh, I'm sure that's not a real one, but the little uh, girl is sitting on top and she has her own mini oh version. God. <laughs> this was done in the uh, UK and it's um, I can't imagine how long it would take to get through that but they did uh, they did create this chocolate bar it's life size and uh, I just thought we found it very interesting and uh, exciting so because of that we like to promote what we created which is not at all 12,770 pounds but it was 150 pounds so this we did for a client. This is a goat. We uh, named the goat boots, which is why it has a boot hanging in there. But we have uh, a client that uh, they're in Sharon Springs. It's a wonderful client. Actually, they've been with us. We've been with them, what, five, six years at least. Um, and they have a goat farm. And so they make everything with goat soaps and lotions and uh, you name it, everything has goat, including uh, we make a goat salted caramel for them. And so we hired a, a sculptor and then our chocolatier and David and I, we just started you know, lathering the frame with chocolate and it's dark chocolate. And we have- It's a dark chocolate clay, you should clarify Yeah, so, that. but it's still chocolate. It is, so absolutely. We make a clay that uh, we used to use in kids' classes and you can mold it uh, sort of like a silly putty or mm -hmm. um, Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. And so, but it's actually chocolate. And someone said Tom Brady. I keep forgetting, and I live in Mass. I keep forgetting when I say goat, that reference is going to come Thank all you. the time, no yeah. matter what. At this point, I'm in agreement. So maybe we'll just say our, Bra our Tom Brady chocolate goat. There you go. Um, but yeah, so uh, we've had it for about four years. And then we um, 
had to, you know, take it down. And we had it in our store in the front window. So the sun started getting to it. So its face was, you know, deteriorating a little bit and we had to uh, let it go out. So uh, we had to put it out to pasture. Yeah, but it was, uh, it was a very fun, fun uh, thing that we did. And uh, we were also uh, looking into possibly doing something with the, um, Great Lodge or the something, Great Wolf Great Lodge, Wolf Lodge. Yeah, they and we were to a almost wolf. going to do a, a wolf, but that didn't come it to play. At the, so. last, at the last, yeah. last second, so. So that's right. our claim to fame. So now we're going to talk uh, chocolate and get into a little education and fun. Yep, and just really a, a little, another brief history. Uh, we are from Chicago. Uh, we both decided to leave corporate America and we took, because people always want to know how we got into the chocolate business. Uh, she worked for Starbucks. I was in manufacturing. Uh, we just decided to leave corporate America and uh, wanted to do something for ourselves. So about 10 years ago, we took the leap and uh, here we are. It was a leap. And it was a leap. So I don't know. Um, I am I think one year, if I can muster it up, I'm going to do another class on working with your spouse. That's a whole nother conversation. Can't you guys tell how much fun she's had? A I mean, don't you see the glow? Conversation. Can you see the whole glow? It's like, oh, I'm blinded. I'm being blinded today. by the glow. But it, it does require uh, a lot. But let's go, hon. Okay. okay. All right. I'm still alive. So <laughs> Yes, you are. All right. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start this journey. And it is a journey. And uh, the goal is to take you on the experience. We call it the chocolate experience. And you're going to go from being to bar, it's gonna be the first phase. And then we're gonna take you from bar to truffle. And uh, we don't, we are not actively involved being to bar, but we are actively involved from bar to truffle. And we're going into a little more detail there. But on the screen right now, what you see is basically where all the magic happens. And what you're looking at are some wonderfully beautiful cocoa pods. If you take a look at the left of the screen, you'll see an actual cocoa tree and you see how the pods grow on the tree. Now, the first thing that probably jumps out at you are the bright colors and the different colors. Take a look at that tree, you'll see there's an orange hue and there's a reddish purplish, purplish hue on those trees. Uh, there's no difference on the beans on the inside of this pod. This is nothing more than mother nature really doing a wonderful job of spicing things up and I think she did an outstanding job. They come in different sizes, different shapes, the overall size is when they're, when they're uh, ripe is about the size of a small football. Uh, so you can kind of pick out the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the dimensions from, from these pictures. So fun facts about chocolate, chocolate production. First of all, cocoa trees grow around the equator. So plus or minus 40 miles, they have to be in a very temperate climate. The lifespan of one of these trees is about 60 years. And each tree, the trees, you have a six month harvest. So you have uh, two harvests per year. Uh, another fun fact, uh, and I think it's really cool. 85% of the cocoa farms in the world <clears throat> are small family farms that have been passed on from generation to generation. It's kind of the original small business, small family business. Of course, you know, some of the, there are larger farms for some of the bigger uh, chocolate makers of the world. Uh, the most fascinating fact and that I'm most encouraged by is the fact that chocolate production at the early stages employs about 5 million people worldwide. Now, 5 million is a lot of people. Why do they employ so many people? Well, you take a look at this uh, lady and she is actually taking a machete to remove the pod from the trees. So at the early stages of production, everything has to be done by hand. and when you put this, to keep things in proper perspective, it takes two trees to make one pound of chocolate. So when you think about the millions of pounds of chocolate that we consume as a planet, it gives you an idea of the, the labor necessary in order to produce all that chocolate that we eat as a planet. So uh, once this pod has been removed by hand, uh, it also has to be opened up by hand and what you find on the inside of these pods are the cocoa beans, but they're surrounded by a white pulpy substance. That pulpy substance has got to be removed. Now in this picture, you'll see the person is taking their handfuls and they're putting them in a small box. Looks like they're setting them on top of a banana leaf in the bottom. It's kind of like a separator. And once that box is full, 
They then place them in big vats like this. Uh, the vats are then covered up and they're left to sit for two weeks. And during this two week time, the bean actually ferments. So fermentation is the first step in making chocolate. Now, they've been cooped up for two weeks and then after two weeks in fermenting, they're actually allowed their freedom and they're left to bask in the sun, the beautiful countryside sun that you see right here. And they uh, sit in the sun for about four to five days where the pulp dries away, the bean itself dries out. And so at this particular point, you're gonna start your journey uh, for the chocolate production. Great, so if everyone can take packet one and we're going to cut it open and you see that little bean there, some people think it's a nut, but it's actually a cocoa bean. And then if you um, would like to twist it, the skin should come off easily. If it does not, just whack it with something or bite it, be Crunch careful. It, yeah. There's um, a shell on there. There's but... a shell, it's a, it's a thin skin. Yep, it is. You wanna to get to the dark meat of the bean. And then I'd like you to take a very little taste because you don't wanna take a big bite because the key word here is fermentation. So this is not gonna be the most delicious thing you're gonna taste in this next hour, but it is the and, beginning of the journey and it's the, all about the experiences today. And some people will like it. Everybody's palate yeah. is different. If you, are, if you are a dark chocolate, like true diehard dark chocolate lover, you might like this, but it's very bitter, a little fermented, no sugar. And it's just been kind of chilling in this shell for who knows how long. And so it's uh, just a, a cocoa bean. And yours is the first human hand to touch it. Once you bake it out of that shell, first human hand to touch it. So some may enjoy it um, and some may not. Others may <laughs> grab a little water uh, to wash it down. But we just wanted you to try it because this is really, you know, just a uh, dry cocoa bean. And it is just at the stage of, you know, going through other processes. But right now it's just fermented and it's just been sitting. So what do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down, real quick. Uh, survey of uh, your see. reaction. A lot oh. of thumbs up. A we lot some, of we have some yeah, middle. Some thumbs. middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Middle's good. That's a whole different thing. That yeah. means it's okay. It's okay. They're not going to run out and try to purchase some or ask where they can get it. Correct. There okay. are some thumbs down. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right, great. So at this particular point in the chocolate making process, small guys are done. Uh, they take these beans just as you taste it and they place them in burlap bags like you see right here. And then <laughs> ship them all over the world. And this is how all the big guys receive their beans. So if I'm Mr. Ghirardelli, or if I'm Mr. Mars, or Miss, Mrs. Hershey's, uh, this is how we receive the beans. So I always like to pick out one of the big guys. And since you guys are like close to Hershey's, Pennsylvania, and maybe you have visited the facility, I'll be Mr. Hershey's today. And be very careful on what you say about them. I know. We won't say it on the call. No, they make, okay, they do all right. Yeah. Not as good as ours. No, but, they're, but still. They're okay. All right. They're a biggie. We want, we, we, we're we, going to grow up to be like We strive to be just like them when we get big, right? Just better. Okay, <laughs> okay, just better. All right, so uh, these things are gonna come into my manufacturing facility and railroad cars, and I'm going to start unloading. And so I'm going to take few pallets, I'm going to take them into building A. I'm going to take a few pallets and I'm going to put them in building B. So let's go to building A. Building A, I'm going to open up this bag. I'm going to take the beans out and then I'm going to place them in this drum, this tumbling device. And this is a cocoa bean roaster. And basically there'll be forced air through this at about 315 degrees. I'm going to tumble this drum for oh, 20, 25 minutes. And so I am going to roast that bean. So roasting is the next step in making chocolate. Fermentation, now I roast. After the roasting process, I'm going to put it through what's called a winnowing process. And winnowing is nothing more than removal of the shell. And I'll be left with the dark meat. I take those chunks of that dark meat and I put it in a cocoa bean grinder. And this machine grinds it. It makes the chunks smaller and smaller. And before they get too small, I get to the point of where uh, I get, I generate what's called cocoa nibs. Yep, so packet one, we're still in. So the next section, you can see these little, um, little cluster of nibs and you just cut open the packet and take some of those out. 
Now, this should taste a lot better than the bean, but it is the bean, but now it's been roasted. So the flavor is much more enjoyable. It tastes more like cocoa. Many people say it tastes like a baking chocolate, but it's really uh, very flavorful. We uh, top uh, one of our chocolates, we call the chocolate fix, and we sprinkle um, nibs on top. Some people will put it on fruit. It is delightful in ice cream. And uh, on one of our calls this week, we got a great idea from uh, uh, one, someone that was on the in the class. They put nibs and they grind them with their coffee. So that's a really great that's idea, a idea that yeah. we're going to obviously try. Yeah, to try but, that. Um, yeah, that, that, that is some super duper caffeine though. You know, you got the coffee yeah, and then you got, you got the, the chocolate. chocolate. So yeah. that might be, you know, where your head might spin off, but uh, <laughs> I still want to try it. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah. So what do you think about that? First of all, did you notice the difference in taste between the fermented bean and the cocoa nibs? You should have noticed some differentiation. I see a lot of head nods, yeah. <laughs> that is probably a little bit closer to what you associate the flavor of chocolate should be. So slowly but surely, we'll get you to the promised land and you will get to the, uh, the ultimate payoff of great, great, great chocolate. So uh, I keep grinding these beans. The chunks get smaller, they get fine particles. During the grinding process, heat is released. I'm doing this in a heated drum. And eventually after about four or five hours of this grinding process, I create chocolate liqueur. And so you see this liquid chocolate. It is also called cocoa mass because there are companies that actually make this and ship it to other companies for further processing. Uh, so if you ever see cocoa mass on an ingredient label, this is what they're referring to. We call it chocolate liqueur, but you could call it cocoa mass. So this is what we make in building A. Now then, let's head over to building B and I'm basically gonna go through the same process. I'm going to uh, remove the beans. I'm going to put them in my roaster. I'm going to winnow them and remove the shell. But instead of putting them in a grinder, I'm going to put them in a hydraulic press. And I'm going to exert a great amount of pressure on these beans. And so we're gonna ask the group, when I squeeze a bean really, really hard, what would you think would come out of it? Any guesses, any ideas of what you think might be a byproduct of that cocoa bean? Oil, oil. right off Thank the bat. Thank you, Peter, it's the right answer. That's absolutely oil, correct. Oil, everyone's saying oil. So what happens is this, you're absolutely correct, it's this wonderful dark murky oil uh, that I create a giant vat of and I let it sit. Probably for, it takes quite a while, but I let it sit for about a week all the solids settle to the bottom and I'm left with a clear liquid on top. And that clear liquid, once it's dried, is known as cocoa butter. And that is another product that's a major ingredient in chocolate and it's a byproduct of the cocoa bean. All right, packet one again. So the third section, you'll see these little off-white oval discs. So just cut that open and they're little disc and it is actually natural cocoa butter. So you can rub it on your hands, rub it on your lips. It's a wonderful chapstick. You can taste it, not much flavor. Um, when we did these before in person, you'd see people rubbing in their cheeks and their lips. Some people put it on their elbows. In the summer, we've even seen people rub it on their heels in the class. I'm like, okay, we're gonna slow it down a little bit, but it is great. Too much information. <laughs> it is great for you. Um, and it is, you know, you can buy a little you know, natural cocoa butter, but it is, people don't realize it comes with a cocoa bean, but you can find it, you know, in soaps and chapsticks and lotions and uh, it's just great. So we just wanted you to, you know, feel the texture, um, certainly taste if you'd like, but, um, it's a natural uh, cocoa butter. It's a great moisturizer. Yeah. We use it to, you know, in our um, some of our chocolate when we're tempering as well. So you think these guys are sick and tired of listening to me and maybe want to try a truffle? I am, if they're not. <laughs> okay. So we're going to taste a chocolate. So we're going to start with what uh, we love to call our vitamin C. If you can see this in my hand, so many people call it a marble. It's shaped like a dome. It's a little, uh, or an egg. It's been called many things, but it's milk chocolate. And it should have a color, a brush stroke of either orange or yellow, and it may have green. It has two of those three colors. And I'd like you to cut that in half. And we're not just gonna, you know, plop chocolate in our mouths today. We're gonna cut that vitamin C in half then I would love for you to just take a smell of it and you should get citrus notes. Um, and then when you put it in your mouth, just let it melt 
and just kind of does, you know, dissolve uh, between the roof of your mouth and your tongue and let it just coat your mouth with this milk chocolate. That is it. That is the perfect chocolate. Yeah, Tina has the right one. I hope everyone has the right one. But it's milk chocolate. It's got yellow or orange or green on there. So this we call our vitamin C. And we call it that because it's made with a lemon, a lime, and a blood orange fruit puree. We get our uh, purees from France. They're uh, picked fresh and then they're you know, frozen. They're flash frozen. So it's really like just biting into the fresh fruit. And it blends very well with chocolate. And so if you are a milk chocolate lover, you should like this. It's not too, thank you. Melissa said it's delicious. It's not too overpowering. Um, so hopefully, uh, Mara got it. It's the, it's the, I can't. It's not the oval. It is not the oval, not oval in, a, in packet it's one. Like it's like a dome. It's a truffle. It's a, a dome three, truffle. three-dimensional truffle. It's got yellow and orange on it. I would ask Tina to hold it up, but I'm sure hers is gone by now. Oh, there it is. She's got it up oh, there. They're helping out. Okay, yep. Best citrus flavored chocolate I ever had. Thank you, Stephen. It's fresh and refreshing. Awesome, delicious. Yeah, we play around with a lot of flavors, trust me. Um, but this is one of our most popular and it's just uh, just a nice, nice balance. We like to make sure everything kind of complements each other and blends well together. And if you are drinking a white wine, this would be delicious with um, a Sauvignon Blanc or um, an unoaked Chardonnay, white chocolate and milk chocolate seem to go very well with uh, white wines. That is uh, what I have found. Not that I've tried a lot. Well, no, I actually well, you have. have. You have. I have. Never you mind have. that. You have. I have. It's fine. I got to do the research. I know, absolutely. Somebody's got to do it. Got to take one for the team. Got to make sure the information I, I am relaying to people is accurate. I, I, I get it. And, and I'm so proud of you for being able to do Thank that. You. Okay, Thank you. Thank you very That's a wonderful much. skill set. Thank you. All right. So now then, uh, we've created two of the components for two of the major components for dark chocolate. We've we've created the chocolate liqueur, we've created cocoa butter. What actually happens in the process of making dark chocolate, that cocoa butter is reintroduced back into the chocolate liqueur. Reason being, if you were just to take a swipe of that, of the chocolate liqueur, it would be almost like peanut butter. I mean, it'd have the same consistency and the, the strength of, of peanut butter would be kind of dry. By reintroducing the cocoa oil to that combinate to the, uh, to the uh, chocolate liqueur, uh, it makes it smooth and it makes it creamy. And so if you take a look at the, um, oops, I missed one. If you take a look, that's okay. Yeah, if you take a look at uh, 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 your packet number one, you'll see that disc that's at the very bottom, that oval disc. All right, I'm gonna show them that. That's a dark chocolate. It's just, that's the last thing in packet one. So you can't miss it. We just want you to cut it open. And instead of, you know, Biting it, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to take a little bite of that dark chocolate disc and just let it melt. That is actually the best way to eat chocolate because if you know when we're out or if we're at a function or we're just having chocolate at home, you're just kind of biting it and chewing it and then it's gone. You still know that it was good, but this way you really get to enjoy uh, as it melts in your mouth and you get a good mouth feel and it, a good melt rate because it lingers a little bit more in your mouth and you can actually enjoy and remember what the heck you're actually eating and it doesn't just kind of go away. So we take it a little slow. Sometimes it's hard, but uh, for the most part, we try to enjoy it and do it this way. Yep. Are there a lot of uh, dark chocolate lovers out there? I think there's a lot of it. Uh, I see head yeah. nods. Yeah. Okay. I think we may have a white. There's a lot of people. So we're going to get white lovers, dark lovers, milk, everything. Yep. Chocolate. Yep. Just yep. chocolate lovers. Let's just say that. There you go. All right, he's going to throw up the trivia question, which he threw up a minute ago, but he had to take it back. How many pounds of chocolate are eaten in the US every second? Is it 500 pounds, 100 pounds, or 300 pounds? Oh my God, they're going so fast now. <laughs> Haven't got it See, yet. they think, boy, they think Americans are really Eating a lot. Well, we are. Okay. Alyssa, Alyssa, Alyssa has B. That is the correct answer. I had to look there. I had to search. That was really a boatload. I like boatload. 
Uh, their kids 500 on a, plus pounds. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And Charlie. you know, I think though, uh, we're going to check the uh, information now because this, you know, we haven't updated. I will bet in the pandemic that number has maybe increased. We certainly know alcohol consumption is up, but I will bet you chocolate Sorry. eating is up as Absolutely. well. So we're going to check that and that. Get, uh, get our numbers updated. Okay, so we completed our, the first part of our journey. We made it from that bean, we made it to the bar. So you were able to taste dark chocolate, but I think it's worth also expanding it a little bit into milk and white chocolate. Uh, first of all, milk chocolate was created uh, in England and it was by Cadbury. And that dark chocolate combination, they just added milk powder to it and hence created milk chocolate. Uh, by definition, milk chocolate is 33 to 43% cacao content, which means everything else is additional sugar and milk powder, which is typically why kids generally like milk chocolate better than they do dark chocolate. And then last but not least, and we've got a wide audience here, so no, I don't know, I, mean, milk. I, oh, I am, absolutely. Uh, I do have very, very devastating news he for does this some in every people. Class, every uh, class. You might have to call 911 because you might just be knocked out. And I know when I found out, I was just devastated and she had to rush me to the hospital. Uh, but there is no chocolate in white chocolate. I, I, I'm I know sorry. many of you know that, I'm but sorry. I let David just think nobody no, knows this but him. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to bear that information, I give you that information, but I, I just, how many of you knew that, by the way? Let me See? just do a quick survey. I knew that. Okay, there's one person that knew it. All right. I did. a lot of people. No, see, oh, okay. see, Bob, he's devastated. Look at that. Okay, but you know the three people that have responded are all women. <laughs> but Bob is devastated. So okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Donna. Bob. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Lynn, oh, the no. Reason, okay. The reason, see, oh, no. Uh, this is, it, uh, anyway. It like all the women. See that? Anyway, uh, the reason they can call it chocolate is because of the cocoa butter. And the white chocolate that you're gonna taste in packet number two is a wonderful white chocolate. It's 28% cacao content, but that 28% is all cocoa butter. Uh, that's why people that are allergic to chocolate can eat white chocolate because there's no cocoa mass or chocolate liqueur in it. Uh, dogs will not get sick or die from eating white chocolate because there's no chocolate in white chocolate. So sorry I upset so many people. And, but anyway. and me. So the next slide, I just, we want to just show you, this is just a close-up of our milk uh, chocolate vitamin C, which we just enjoyed. So basically uh, a truffle is three components. The center of it is a ganache, and then there's a shell, and then there's some sort of decoration. It could be color, it could be um, a texture, something you sprinkle on, or it could also be, uh, we use decorations with little tools. We just like to make sure that, you know, while we you know, hope and appreciate our chocolate being tasted. We want it to look good as well. So while that's on the screen, let's go to packet two. And if you would like to just open it from the side, you can take all three components out because you're gonna be doing a little experiment with them. So in this packet, you have a white chocolate that is a uh, oval shape. You have a milk chocolate that's oval shaped, similar to the dark one you had in the last packet. And then this last thing in packet two is ganache. It's literally just a sample of our dark chocolate ganache, which is made with dark chocolate and heavy cream. And so what we want you to do is um, take a little bite of the milk chocolate oval and a little bite of your dark chocolate ganache. At the same time. At the same time. And then when you're done, take a little bite of your white chocolate with the dark chocolate ganache. What we're trying to do is just to get you to taste a different shell with a different center because that is what we do all the time when we're creating chocolate. So we wanna make sure that the chocolates are balanced. You just had the uh, vitamin C, which is a milk ganache and a milk um, shell. The next one we're gonna try will be a little different. So we wanted you to try this. All right, so 2017 US consume an average 4.4 kilos of chocolate annually, but Swiss residents consume twice as much. Yeah, we knew that too. Okay. Nice. 
All right. I love that we can get this information just so quickly when people are out there. Oh, uh, the good old Google machine. Yeah. That good old Google machine. One guy machine. on a class, so the other class, he was like, so Pam, I see you were a veteran with Starbucks. And David, you worked at blah, blah, blah. He wasn't looking at chocolate. He's looking about he information yeah, on us. Information on us, yeah, which is a, a, a little, little scary. Little spooky, but, That's uh, a little scary. You know, like, how did you know I went to <laughs> like, Cameron University? Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> So I'm, I'm good with this uh, research on the chocolate. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, I, I just, you know, chocolate is, it's good for the soul. It really soothes. So let me try some. All right, so this next one. So this one is uh, actually you're getting a treat. It's a Valentine's truffle. We uh, bring it back every year. It's a dark chocolate. It's the exact same shape as the one on your screen. It's a dome or an egg or marble. But it is dark chocolate and it should have a splash of pink on it, just a brush stroke of pink on the shell. And this is, uh, Tina's great. I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna work with us going forward after this, <laughs> yeah, Tina. Yeah, yeah. Be our Vanna, I mean, be our Vanna <laughs> white of chocolate, if you will. So <laughs> that is the right truffle. And I'd like you to cut that in half. So this is our strawberries and cream. And we use a fresh fruit puree of strawberries. It is blended with white chocolate on the center. And then it's dipped in a dark shell. So similar to what you were doing with uh, packet two. So this is a, you know, an actual truffle. And we bring this back every year. So it's got a little fruity, a little sweetness, but the dark chocolate helps, you know, balance everything out. So if you like um, strawberries, you like dark chocolate. Um, it's just a nice little treat. It's uh, very seasonal. We only have this uh, during the Valentine's holiday, mm -hmm. but uh, it's just something different and, um, you know, simple. Why are we only eating half? Because we're, just <laughs> <laughs> we're eating half just to do this slow tasting and enjoying and she experiencing. She likes to torture you. I, it's not torture. Right. It's the way you taste chocolate. It's a masochistic But then tendency. the best thing is when we're done and we're continuing, you're listening to David talk so much, you get the other half that you can enjoy and you have something to do while he's chatting. So you have the other half left that you can eat when we're done kind of explaining it. <laughs> But we do, and and one guy when he uh, when he asked the same things, but um, he saved some for his wife later. Yeah, so my see. wife is eating the other half. Right. Oh, right. see, there you go, Bob. Thank you. So he's sharing his wife's eating the other half. But Bob's not happy. I mean, he's, he's not, happy. Oh, okay. That's an upside down All smile. Right. <laughs> Feel sorry for you, David. You should. <laughs> but we're very well behaved on Zoom calls. <laughs> First time I used a knife to cut chocolate. <laughs> you could bite a half too, but we just we're just trying to taste it together first. And if we did the whole piece, the conversation would be too quick. So we're just kind of enjoying it. All, All right. right. This next slide are good friends of ours that we just like to always include in our sessions. So if you haven't seen it, you should certainly make sure. This uh, episode was done in 1952. And of course, <clears throat> Lucy and Ethel were working in a chocolate shop and uh, they got fired, which I sometimes think of firing David, but I can't. Nope. <laughs> um, I got a very strong union. <laughs> he, yeah. And so um, he and I become Lucy and Ethel sometimes during uh, the high seasons, which we're in one of them now. And who's Lucy? I'm, Lu I'm Lucy. I'm Ethel. Yes. Um, <laughs> And so we uh, have a conveyor belt just like they did here, although this was a prop and it went really fast. Ours has a very nice slow temperature so we can keep up you know, speed and we keep up with everything. We're not eating them or throwing them in our blouse or hats. We are actually packing them up so that we can sell them. But uh, we just like to uh, always pay homage. It's just, you know, it's a wonderful show. I love Lucy. I thought this was the most popular, but actually the most popular one was when they were us uh, smashing grapes and they were making wine so that's another great episode as well so um we just drink the wine with the chocolate we don't have to smash them that's right okay All right. so uh we're going to making truffles now yep. so this is the second part of the journey we, we showed you how we make a bar now we're going to show you how we make truffles we we get the bars in and we create truffles and so this next slide is a little short video uh of myself and rick who is our chocolatier 
we are making uh, our seasonal holiday truffle, which is called a hot cocoa truffle. So this literally, ganache is typically smooth and creamy looking. This looks bumpy, but that's because those are little mini marshmallows inside. So on the table are uh, silicone molds, and we have to make sure that all the chocolate gets into the cavities. It's about 600 cavities on the table. And once it's in the cavity, we then take each mold and we shake it so that it gets very solid and packed in. And then we let this sit overnight. And then the next morning when we come in, we have perfectly round truffles. We don't have to hand roll them anymore. They're perfect like these, just round truffle balls. And we're actually putting them on our machine that's called Lucy. And Lucy is going to coat these truffles and it helps us um, mass produce because we have to have, you know, everything is made by hand, but we mass produce on these machines. So you see the flowing chocolate here. So it's coating the chocolates and then they're gonna come on the other side and they're on a conveyor belt that's shaking off um, excess chocolate and then you will have a perfectly round truffle. And so we then, as I said, always have some sort of decoration. So if it's not a color, we sprinkle things. So what I'm gonna sprinkle on this truffle is Aleppo pepper because this is our chocolate that we call the cure, which we also have in your box, which is what we're going to taste now. So um, you'll see my hand come out with gloves on and I'm just sprinkling some Aleppo pepper. So the truffle that you're gonna taste looks just like this one on your screen. It is a round traditional truffle. All right, Tina, you ready? Perfect, <laughs> see? She's got the banner white. I, I like that, I love that. All I right, think that's so great. <laughs> I'm, I don't do it as well. She has a better camera, but there it is. It's a round traditional truffle. And I'm sorry, but I do need you to cut this in half and um, smell it again. So if you smell, you might have a little, um, there should be some savory notes as well as a little spice to it. So this is made with cinnamon, bay leaf, and then it has dark chocolate, but it's also got cayenne. But you will not get the kick of heat until you swallow. Is it the one with the red streak on top or the other one? It's, it's the, the other, other one. one. It's, it's got other a little one. sprinkle on there, sprinkle yeah. of orange. Orange, yes, orange drizzle orange, and orange drizzle, drizzle sprinkles. Drizzle and, and orange sprinkles, yeah. So if you let this melt, you can close your eyes, you can just ooh, ah, whatever you wanna do, but it should melt very nicely and then you're gonna get a little heat. So it's like having a little um, spicy hot chocolate. Um, might clear your throat a little bit, but um, it's one of our most popular selling truffles mm -hmm. because it's different. You actually will go through layers of flavor on this one. <clears throat> this goes well. Um, with a very nice bold Cabernet. And somehow the red, I don't know if it's the tannins or the red wines, but for some reason, those bring out a little bit more of the pepper notes in the chocolate. And so- um, Oh so no, <laughs> this is good. I love the warm love flavors, the warm awesome. Flavors. Yeah. yeah, this is one of my favorites. Um, and it's, it's also great on like a, a nice, you know, a cold evening. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's so tasty. tasty. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, so somebody's <laughs> having some wine with it. Yep. Yeah. Smart. I can feel the heat, but it's good. Awesome. Yeah, it's just the right, thank you. It's the right amount of kick because sometimes, you know, you can just have too much and then it, you know, you don't really get to enjoy the flavor, but this should be just a little subtle. Yep, so just to know hands. that you're having, you know, you got a little pepper in there. Yep, spicy. Not too much. Surprising. Surprising and, and wonderful. Delicious. Awesome. Thank you. All right, that's a good, those are good reviews. Is there some, some are around and some are done. The difference is the mold. So we use different shaped molds, like the two that we've had, the strawberries and cream and the vitamin C were done in a hard plastic acrylic mold, which you're gonna see on this next slide. And this machine that you see in this picture before you start, it's, uh -huh. um, we call this machine Ethel. So Ethel does our, hard plastic acrylic molds, and then Lucy does our uh, traditional molds, which are silicone. So they're soft and, you know, they're moving, you can move them around, whereas these are hard plastic. So that's why they're different shapes. So this machine comes with a little short story. Um, we were told by a colleague that uh, this was gonna be something great, would really enhance our business, but it was in Italy. 
So David comes up with, you know, with my manufacturing and engineering backgrounds, I should be the one to go to Italy and get the training. So I had to take the one, I had to take the bullet for the team this yeah, time. It was bullet, up to me. He flew into Milan. So long there was no flight. Bullet. I flew, flew into Milan. It was just a long flight. I was miserable the whole time. Yeah. All I did was call her back and whine the whole time. No, I didn't. I didn't even I'm hear so from him. I'm so miserable in Milan. I didn't I'm, even hear from him. Oh, I'm so miserable. He got trained on this machine, which has paid for itself over and over. Can you keep this machine? No, I can't. You're playing with the knobs. Um, now you've given away the answers. Oh, nobody trivia. saw it. Nobody oh, well. saw it. You know, everybody's low key and they've had enough chocolate now. So we'll just, you know, now he's messing with the thing. Hopefully you saw the video. But anyway, this machine, they're acrylic molds. We don't have to wait overnight. So we just, once it finishes, we can just put these in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the chocolate. And then we can knock them out and pack them up and they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. But this machine is uh, called a one shot single shot single depositor. Shot depositor. Single shot depositor. Yep. It is wonderful. So we can probably pump out if someone is loading this machine continuously, we can do about 800 an hour. So while we still make everything by hand, we have to have equipment to help us we have be to process, competitive. Yeah, we have to mass produce with hand handmade ingredients. We would not make it. We would not be here if we were still hand rolling truffles. Right. So you would just pack up and go. No. Someone says, are you making these in a kitchen, in a home, or in a warehouse? We are actually in our storefront. We have a, yeah, we have uh, we a, retail, have a retail operation. operation, which is very minimal at this point, obviously due to the pandemic, but um, most of our business now is online, virtual, or um, corporate. We're doing uh, getting a lot of corporate business, but we have a, a, we have a, kitchen. a kitchen. Yeah. I like and to think of it as a manufacturing facility, which is what I always wanted, but Small, but it's it's pretty effective. It's pretty we're, powerful. We're small but powerful. Yep, we we pump a lot of chocolate before before COVID. Mm -hmm. I think we could produce about four hundred thousand a year. Mm -hmm. But actually, this past season, we've been so busy. I wouldn't be surprised if it were more. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost sure. And going into next year, I'm, I'm positive. So Bob was in. Got a good coffee the other day along with some chocolate. So my staff said, "There's someone in here today who's going to be on your uh, four o'clock class." I'm like. Well, they must live in the area because I we sent out so many packets. I just thought they were all over the place. I forgot there was a um, someone local. So thank you for coming in. So that means you have some extra goodies with you. And with the, she's mentioned Sudbury. Bob, are you from Sudbury? I don't know, but... Yes. Okay, well, we See, use... we pinpointed you. Now, this might be creepy, too, that we're, like, figuring out who was in. Where no, but lived. she said Sudbury. Sarah told us, so yeah, that's Sarah how. Did. That's right. Uh, but we use caramel coffee also. So we use, uh, that's, there was a good cup of coffee. We use caramel coffee, which yeah, is, which is they're local. Their coffee is amazing. And I actually worked for Starbucks for 17 years, but karma, he, he I actually think the owner of karma started with Starbucks back yeah. in the nineties. Cause we've had a conversation, but still his coffee is amazing. So that's who we use. So I see somebody asked something near and dear to my heart. What is the bottleneck of your process? Uh, David. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. What is the bottleneck of our problem? Uh, That's the first thing that came to me. Yeah, I know. The, the bottleneck actually is making the ganache. Keeping it, that machine can outpace. It can, it can, the, the ingredients going in there is the bottleneck. So the tempered chocolate, which is on the left side, the left hopper, and then the ganache, which is on the right hopper. Those are the, uh, that's what has to be constantly filled. That is the bottleneck. If you keep those constantly filled, that machine just spits them out. So we're going to, you know, just kind of ride this wave and see how long this goes. Cause it was, you know, this has not always been our life where we, like in December, we did shut our website down for two weeks because we could not keep up with the demand. And we've now just told people that um, we cannot guarantee as of Friday to get it to you by uh, Valentine's day, but not just because of us, but the shipping. There's so much, you know, happening out there and so many problems with people getting, heck, we were afraid you weren't going to get yours because of the damn storm. But luckily, hopefully many of you have it. And if, you know, you didn't, then you'll get to at least see this, um, this video, but um, it's, a, it's just so much going on now. You just can't really determine what's going to happen. So I see, oh good, our, so see Sarah can be our PR. So she's now telling people how they can order chocolate, okay. how many you can buy. I live in Newton. All right. I have to go to the store, please come out. Yep. 
So Let's please, and once you, if you visit our website, please let us know and just mention Lafayette because I always like to send extra goodies uh, when you order online. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big part of our, how we're living today. Mm -hmm. um, I love a spaceship though. If you could do that, that would be pretty cool actually. And is Sarah all right on time with New our Jersey. website? Yep, look at that. See that? We don't even need, we're done. Sarah can, you know, finish this off for us, tell you all about us and the website. And we do have one more trivia and we have one more piece of chocolate to try. Absolutely. We're not done yet. Almost. You're not through with us yet. I know you're tired of hearing us chat, but it's, you know, a couple more minutes. So how many cocoa beans do you think it takes to make one pound of chocolate? 400 beans? 100 beans or 800 beans? Okay, first one, Nicole, it is 400 beans. Yep. So that little bean that you had in packet one, if you had 400 of those, you could make, you could make a pound of a chocolate, pound of chocolate. Yeah. with the proper equipment. Yeah. yeah. So let's finish on this last note, the last dome. It's very beautiful. Oh, Tina, you ready? <laughs> All right. There it is. I'm going to do it like, there she go. Okay, there we go. This is the strawberry balsamic dark chocolate truffles. And this is probably a unique flavor profile because you're talking about strawberries and, strawberry fruit puree and, and balsamic, balsamic vinegar. vinegar. But it's really, um, oh, and this pairs very nicely with like a Pinot Noir because you need a, a, like a medium bodied wine with this one so that it won't overpower it. But it's really, um, it's mild, it's smooth. Um, we've got some other flavors or spices that we put in, we can't tell you because then I'd have to black out everyone's brain like they did in Men in Black because I, I can't give away secrets. Plus you're recording us. Oh boy. So we can't tell you any more no. other than strawberry puree and balsamic vinegar and dark chocolate. But, uh, oh, definitely goes well with the red. Well, yep, I told you, I would not still be wrong when it comes to alcohol and truffles. That is a specialty of mine, I'd say. Uh -huh. uh, what's your best seller? This one was wonderful. Which truffles are in the small business collection of your website? So we created that at the, at the small business collection. We created that at the beginning of the pandemic yep. because we wanted to offer um, a more reasonably priced option for people on the website because we were also closed. And we kind of put um, a collection of our best sellers. So you would probably get a balsamic in there, you'd get the cure, you'd get um, maybe the Aristeas or the chocolate fix, you'd get a caramel. We like to put our traditional, uh, nothing too crazy, but it's um, we have discounted that box online, the small business box, because um, you know, we just did some for the pandemic. And so we were going to stop it right before holiday, but um, we then just kept going. What is your favorite with beer? So funny you asked that. We did do a beer tasting several, several, several years ago. Mm -hmm. And we did pair some of the, um, the fruitier, like that we had the balsamic. We also had, um, we had our dark sea salt with like a dark beer, like a very dark, dark chocolate beer. Um, a, malt. a malt, a single malt. Single malt. What was the There's name of it? There's um, a beer person in here. What was it? It's a the dark beer. It's the dark beer. Delirium. You guys also have beer. a honey uh, hops on your menu, if I remember we correctly. <laughs> that one's on our website. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, someone the, just ordered the 15 piece truffle box. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> the honey hops. It's it's funny. It's a very hoppy truffle. It's more hops than uh, honey. It's made with uh, citra hops and uh, honey with milk and dark chocolate. So you have to really be a beer you lover. You be an IPA kind of guy. And he is or not, gal. he is not, right. but it's very unique. And if you like the beer taste, you will get that in this truffle with a little sweetness from the honey. I don't have a beer myself, I plan to drive, so I will <laughs> wash all the chocolate with a monster. Monster drink, okay. <laughs> we had a guy this week who was uh, doing every truffle with Tito's vodka. Everyone and he was just sure that, oh somebody's got a clap yeah yeah it was hysterical and he said everyone was good everything was good with Tito's everything like, goes okay. good with Tito's I wouldn't argue with him his name was Bo <laughs> it was yeah it was that's right and Bo has actually ordered a couple of times already has he? so he's trying everything with his Tito's vodka okay all right are there any questions any other questions 
Yeah, how'd you like the strawberry balsamic? Did you see? Did you taste the I strawberry saw, the balsamic? We got a lot of comments well, on that one. Okay, Somebody love this one. It. The best. Those okay. were the red. Were you not listening to me? Talking no, no, no. I, I can't multitask like you. I don't have that skill I set. So, yeah, I, I was focusing on the audience and All right. couldn't I do, can both do both at the same time. So, yeah, you know, you're amazing. You're just I, absolutely I, amazing. I know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for believing. <laughs> All right, um, go to the next slide, please. Just yeah. with also, so the first thing is a big thank you because we have yeah, to make thank sure you we thank much. you for just enduring our conversation, um, participating in the class. We're glad we finally uh, were able to meet and uh, do this with everyone and hopefully you enjoyed it. And we also put all of our social media and our website up, but Sarah has already taken care of the website but if you are, but if you active, missed it, you, it's on your packet, I think, or on the card as well. And then follow us on social media. That'd be greatly appreciated. Then you'd be connected with all the new creative things we come up with. And someone asked if we sell the NIS online. We do not, but they are easily purchased on uh, Amazon. And I think Valrona would be the best NIS yeah, yeah. because they're very, it's a yeah, high on, quality um, company. And so those are the best NIS. That's where we get our NIS. I love your banter. Everybody does. Oh, yeah. This, this, is a, this is a lightweight banter. How do you paint the more intricate designs is a question. It's just a, a, a brush, a brush stroke. We basically. do a brush, sometimes we use our finger or sometimes we just kind of fleck them, but just depends on the mood we're in, but it's all um, just easy decorating. Um, so thank you, this was really good. great. We really appreciate it. Don't remove the bottleneck panel. <laughs> All right, I'm, I try every day, uh, Bob. It's hard, but I, I try every day. I will not remove the bottleneck. Thanks, how do you spell? Oh, Valrona, it's V-A-L or H? V-A-H-L. V-A-H-L. R-O-N-A, Valrona chocolate. V-A-L-R-H-O-N-A. It's one of those combinations. There's an H in there somewhere, but it's V-A-L. Rona. Val Rona with a V. V is in Victor. Yeah. But it's and they it's throw wonderful. an H in there. I think it's a uh, French company. They do it just to be uh, perfect. There you go. This That's made it. A great, oh, this made for a great birthday Zoom. Thank you, Laura. There was saw uh, the class we had at two. It was their birthday tomorrow, and this was her celebration. So yeah. it's just a birthday celebration. This is Fun afternoon a, activity. Oh, uh, we really oh thank you, Katie Spellard. This was great. Yep. Um, lots of fun. We will order. Don't forget if you order, because we've had everyone talk about ordering, make sure you mention Lafayette so I can send you some treats. Or I can send you David, either one. <laughs> Whatever you would like. <laughs> and she'll cut me up into little pieces. <laughs> little pieces. And put them in a little candy cup for you. She will do that, trust me. <laughs> Dip them in dark chocolate. All right. Oh my God, so many thank yous. I forget there's so many people on the call. Thank you guys so much. Um, For the international um, alumni, well, you know, you can, you've got the video, so. Yeah, share that with them. Okay. Thank you much, Yummy Yummy Yummy. Thank you very much. Sarah, thank you okay, for, Sarah, for pounding you. me and making sure we made this happen. Yeah. Amy, awesome meeting you as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to thank you both so very much for your time today. I want to thank everybody who was on. And I just want to plug our next Lafayette event is on February 18th. Um, we're doing a jazz event, a uh, window into American history. And you can find more information about that on Leopard Link. I hope everybody enjoyed their chocolate and their afternoon together. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Enjoy thank your you. weekend. And if you're having snow, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're getting okay. snow too. I know. Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend.